always got it going on. His new project is called Limits to Mercy. Limits to Mercy. He's dropping January 7th at rickthedon.com. He's putting it down. I suggest you cop. He's a legend in the making. Music is fearless and original. One time, two times for my man Rick the Don. Cops. Rick the Don, what's going on, man? It's the big baller, baby. Yeah, I'm here to give you that huge shout out. I know what's going down with you, man. I hear you got that Limits to Mercy album release, and I know it's about to be down. I love your style, man. So check this out. I'm calling all ballers to, su- to support Rick the Don's new album, Limits to Mercy, on January 7th at rickthedon.com. Go check it out. Keep it right and tight. Because if you don't get right, y'all gon' get left. Rick the Don, go do your thing. Big ballers out, baby. And I holla. What's up, y'all? This is Master P and Rick the Don album, Limit to Mercy, dropped in January 7th, 2022. And it's no feeling, man, when you work hard, put your trust and faith in God, and never give up. You're going to always be on top. I see you at the top, Rick the Don. Salute. I used to roll back woods, rip the dawns, good wherever he goes. One million and one flows, deposit and dough. Said you down with the mafia family, let me know. Yeah, number one, I don't do number two. They watching how I do, because I'm really hood. Red hoodie, gold jewelry, too groovy. Might lose me, don't approach with the foolery. Keep the two on me, homie, you don't know me. Rip the dawn, the one and only. Yeah. Hello, I'm Rick the Don. I am the host with the most. You're listening to the Really Hood Podcast. Welcome. And today's episode is brought to you by reallyhood.com. It is a space for independent artists to showcase their talent. Check it out. Today's episode is called Purple. And that is because if you take red, the color that represents the bloods, and blue, the color that represents the crips, and you bring those two colors together, you get purple. Now, I am one who does not glorify or glamorize gang life or gang violence. I feel that it is time to renegotiate the terms of these contracts because I believe that we are now in a different space and we need to be thinking as a collective. I would first like to acknowledge the reason why this is probably not going to happen. I mean, a indefinite peace treaty between the Bloods and Crips. That reason being the amount of blood that has been shed in the streets and the amount of loved ones that have been lost. But we cannot allow those loved ones to have died in vain by continuing the cycle of violence. One of the greatest things you can do when a family member passes away is to use their memory to inspire change. And if we're doing the exact same thing, I think we're dishonoring their memory. Now, may we please discuss something that is sorely in need of discussion. And that is that the human brain doesn't fully develop until the age of about 25, according to scientists. And we know that Bloods and Crip groups were created by these very young men, probably in the age range of 16, 13. So in essence, we're following the creations of children. If you really break down all of the factors and facts, we're following or we are part of a group that was constructed by the mind of a 16 year old, which was not fully developed, right? So to me, that is exactly why I look at gang violence as very trivial. All right, anytime you're shooting somebody because they're wearing a different color, that sounds like something that would take place in a high school. I mean, I don't like his color, man. That sounds like something that, that that doesn't sound like something that a 25 year old fully mentally developed male would say about somebody else. It wouldn't be, hey, man, I'm about to take him out because he, he went a different color. It'd be something more analytical, more intellectually sound. Like, OK, this person has robbed my, my, my grandma house or something like that. Uh, it wouldn't be, hey, he wearing a different color, man. That sounds like something that would, you know, take over the hallways of a high school. You see what I'm saying? So I don't like the fact that we are still, you know, putting more logs on the fire of a campsite that was constructed by someone who was not fully mentally developed. And I feel compelled to bring up the fact that these groups in their most purest form were actually meant to do good things in the communities. All right, you can't ignore that. That's at the foundation of what these groups represent. They were there to protect those who were weak and they were there to inspire community activism. To have gotten so far away from that to me is the greatest 
disrespect to what the Crips and Bloods originally represents. That's just my personal opinion. I don't mean to offend anybody. But I think that if you're not building your community, if you're not protecting the weak, then you are in a lot of ways disrespecting the foundation of what you represent. I understand this is a tall order and probably impossible. So one thing about myself is I don't like to give out these mass generalizations or come up with these mass ideas without providing some way to actually get it done. And how do we bring peace amongst these people? I would argue that it has to start in California, obviously, because that's the birthplace of gang culture. It will need to involve key figures. Now, I don't know the exact names of these figures, but I'm pretty sure the people in California do. We need like the top 20 or maybe even the top 10 top ranking gang members within the black community to come to the table. And I would imagine that these members are above the age of 25. And I would say that anybody under that age kind of needs to fall back on this one because like I said, the mind doesn't fully develop to about 25. And we don't want somebody that's 18 in there trying to prove something, messing up the entire thing. We need the OGs and then also the, the group of people just under the OGs because sometimes the OGs are speaking from an old era. So we need somebody that's kind of somewhere in the middle between the OGs and the new group to speak on both behalves because we all know and we probably all heard what happens when the OG comes in and tries to you know regulate the youngsters the youngsters push back so you need some liaisons that's somewhere in the middle between the OGs and the youngins all right just the, the G's the gangsters right and I think if you have a nice a nice combination of the OGs uh the gangsters and maybe a few selected youngsters that have proven to have intellectual ability maybe invite them as well and we need to have real conversations Next, there needs to be a push for some type of regulation. We need Bloods and Crips to, you know, perhaps legalize their activities. What I mean by that is, you know, make Bloods an organization, make Crips an organization, create Blood Foundations, Crip Foundations, or perhaps change the names of Bloods and Crips altogether and create a unified new name. Now, this would be a, this would be huge. This would be absolutely huge. Can you imagine this? Before you get upset and you go get your flags, you start riding, listen to what I'm about to say. Like, have an open mind for a minute. Can you imagine if we pioneered, this generation, pioneered an entirely new movement, not anti-white movement, because I don't want to create another black... Panther Party and had the white people scared and doing all this crazy stuff and secret surveillances and all that. I don't want to, this ain't about them. And I need them to stay out of this one. Stay out of our business on this one. This is all about internal black conflict. But can you imagine the power if all these factors and people came together and we created a brand new gang, a brand new movement? Uh, You know, I don't know what it would be called. I, I haven't thought that far. Obviously, a lot of what I'm saying is off the cuff. I'm just kind of like talking from inspiration and from just from emotion. But this new group, wouldn't be called Bloods or Crips because that would represent an old faction. That would represent an old way of thinking. Um, you know, the, we got some very creative people within these communities. Think of something that in incorporates all of us. All right. That's why I named this episode Purple because that incorporates both sides and in a way that's respectful. And if I can be honest, I don't even like the color purple. I think it's just be black. I mean, bring us all under the same umbrella. Maybe the name of the group would be called Black Umbrella, where everybody, Bloods, Crips, folks, Hoovers, all these different con conglomerates and commodities are under this black umbrella and it's not about crime man we got to make sure we extract that out of our business and if we call it black umbrella we can create it as an organization and we can make it so that you know we're trying to impact laws that might be detrimental and harmful to the black community like a three strikes rule or you get caught with this amount of crack but this amount of cocaine you don't go to jail for long some of that stuff needs to be attacked and guess what people like you know the politicians they can't attack it the right way because they're not affected by it we need people that are affected by some of this uh, this unfairness to be the pioneers of some of these law changes. But you can't have those people pioneer a law change if they're focused on the wrong color or wearing a different color hat or, you know, having a hat on the wrong side. All this 16-year-old, you know, kitty stuff. We need grown men, you know, grown 25-plus-year-old men who've been through some things that can speak intellectually in these platforms or in these different uh, spaces and say, hey, we need to institute some type of litigation that protects this or that or this because I've been through that and I can speak to it. We need the OGs of that caliber. We have to change what is considered gangster. You know what's gangster to me? Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was a free person. She got through all the barriers, made it, and guess what she did? She went all the way back several times and she saved people. That takes courage. 
Courage is gangster. Not taking a metal firearm and doing this with your little finger. If you can do this with your finger, everybody can do that that has a finger. So how is that gangster? Gangster can't be something that everybody can do. But you know what? Everybody would not. Some of the hardest gangsters walking this planet right now would not do what Harriet Tubman did. You wanna know why? Because what Harriet Tubman did was really gangster. Because most of most of the gangsters walking this earth right now, if they were in that situation, once they was free, they would have went about their business. She was free and she went back and saved multitudes of people. Now that's gangster because not everybody would do that, including myself in most cases. Maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't, I can't say for sure. But what I do know is doing this ain't gangster at all. In my opinion, it's very cowardly because you can't do this most likely. But I'm not desensitized to the fact that we live in an urban jungle. And unfortunately, nobody really does this anymore. So you really don't have a choice. I'm not desensitized to that. And man, we please, please look at the game being played. All right, the KKK don't even have to do anything no more. They're chilling. They got their hands up like, hey, these guys are so afraid. They don't even want to touch us. They just want to kill each other. We got them so afraid. <laughs> They're afraid of the color white. You know the safest uniform in the hood? <laughs> a white one. You walk through the hood as a white person or with a badge of any sort. Safety. How long is it going to take for us to say, wait a minute, we're a part of a game and we're losing. We're playing checkers. We're playing red and blue squares where they're playing chess, black and white squares. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And it needs to be a change, not against the white man, but against self annihilation. All right. With all that being said, let's take a moment and check out this track by yours truly, Rick Don. I'll be back to wrap this whole topic up. Thank you. Dear me. Dear me. Dear me. Man, I got the game sold up. Fake drop, I'm like, so what? The last laugh, like a math class. Look how fast the cash add up. I'm rich to me. Screw your money. I'm from the D, like a bumblebee. Y'all sweet to me. Bucky man, there's no sting in me. Push the V, like I push the whip. All I can taste her love stick. Penetrate to her leg stick. Feet pretty in her hair did. Mafia to the enemy. Most love of my enemies. Feeding off their energy. I guess you can call that synergy, uh. Moment of silence, I'm immune to the violence, moving this shit is beautifully violent, mentally vibrant, you shouldn't try this. To my unborn son, keep your hand on the Bible, the other on the gun, cost murder for fun, blacks killing blacks too, can't explain that one. Yeah, I got it, you know I got it good, moving up the ladder, came straight from the hood, diamonds on my neck, diamonds on my wrist, diamonds on my finger, that's all I can tell you. Surrounded by hustlers Probably why you can't touch us Maybe why you couldn't scare us Lyrically don't compare us Y'all should all be embarrassed Back on top like a ferris Type of flow, you go appraise Store away, you know cherish Picasso with that ink pen Da Vinci, Rembrandt Masterpiece, high mass of them streets Pretty good for a 4.0 geek Plus I dabble in drugs Of course I bust a few slugs Still my life's more than that Life's more than a club uh. Back on the mark, back at night in the spark Back on the beat, so I'm back in your heart Back in my Jordans, back lyrically scorching Slow it down, dumb it down Even more, to the floor Let a boy sing the chorus Yeah, I got it You know I got it good Moving up the ladder Came straight from the hood Diamonds on my neck Diamonds on my wrist Diamonds on my finger That's all I can tell you yeah, I got it, got it. You know I got it good. Moving up the ladder. Came straight from the hood. Diamonds on my neck. Diamonds on my wrist. Diamonds on my finger. That's all I can tell you. Now she's at the door. Now we're at the table. Now we're on the couch. Now we're watching cable. Now I'm in the head. Now we're drinking good. Now she in my bed. That's all I can tell you. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that track. Listen, y'all, let's put a nice bow on this very, very heavy topic. We need to come up with something that incorporates all black gangs. In fact, we should just remove the gang title and just incorporate all black people. And I already came up with a name called the Black Umbrella. I have a trademark, so whoever can do this, go for it. I don't even, I don't want no credit. I just want to see change for our people. Not against the white man, but for the betterment of our people. We have to go legitimate. We have to go legit. That's something that has to happen. 
We have to come to grips that these constructs are the inventions of children. And therefore, the grown man, 25 and older, needs to step in and reorganize things. We also need one voice or at least 10 or maybe 15, 20 max. We can't have everybody speaking at once. I don't care if you're the biggest gangster of all time. You have to learn to defer to somebody who has that skill because even though you might be stronger in terms of being able to fight better, being able to shoot better, you don't probably have the gift of speech. So you have to let that person who has that gift be the voice box. That's how it works, man. The gangster culture or black people in general need to function as a body you need eyes you need a mouth you need a right hand you need a left hand you need a heart everybody does what they do so whatever your gift is go to that space but we need someone who can speak intellectually we need somebody who understands the games that's being played we need a strategist we need all those different pieces in order to make this work and i can't say this enough we have to redefine what gangster is it's not doing this it's not wearing a certain color it's about sacrifice that's the greatest gangster move that it, it, basically gangsters need to become and transition into heroes heroes are not afraid of death because they've already made their peace with the lord above you feel me now with that all being said Thank you for listening. And I do apologize to anybody I offended. I realize that what I'm saying is pretty heavy. And I don't mean to desensitize any of your emotions and, and the pain that you're facing or have faced over the years as a result of gang violence. I just wanted to see an end to all this stuff, man, and, and have us all functioning not only as a, black, um, as a black race, but as a world race. Because I think the real, or I should say I know the real enemy is not each other. Okay, the real enemy is not each other. And that's what I'll say about that. All right. It's not people. All right. I think the real enemies are spiritual. And with that all being said, before I go into a whole new rant, have a good day. Fight the power, man. What do I mean by that? My new album, Limits to Mercy, is scheduled to come out on January 7th, 2022. I'm going to release this album on my own website and I believe that I am the forerunner of something that will soon take over my new music will only be available on rickthedon.com those platforms are stealing from the artists how about that one okay um, I just got a royalty check from my distributor what was it last week and that royalty check was for ten dollars <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I got kids, man. I can't have people listening to my music, downloading my songs 19 times, 500 times, and then Spotify saying, hey, man, here's $10. Now, I want to give a shout out to my folks in India. Listen, I don't know what's going on with India. I don't know what it is. Look, when I look at my analytics, my analytics say this. India loves Rick the Dawn. I don't know what it is. Now, today's episode is about crack is whack. I also admit myself having sold crack. And I, I remember this one time I sold to a mom and she had little babies. Crack is basically science. Turning cocaine into crack is a scientific process. So why is crack whack? Because if you take that same hustle and drive that it takes to turn cocaine into crack, and apply it to something else, you can be legally rich. We need this next generation of black men and women to expand their horizons, okay? Figure out how do you make clothing? How do you make sugar? How do you make bread? Welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Rick the Dawn. Go do your Googles. 70% of my audience base comes from India. So I have to dedicate this particular episode to the homies in India. Yapura episode Barat Ko Samarpit Hai Kanyaki Apaka Samarthen Apaka Ladek Mean Muhi Saget Melehe. This entire episode is dedicated to India because y'all support your boy. I got music coming and everything. Go ahead, girl, say that word. यह पूरा एपिसोड भारत को समर्पित है क्योंकि आपका समर्थन आपके लड़के में मुझे संगीत मिला है। That's exactly what I said, homies. Homika. Oh my goodness, is that simple? This is for my homikas in India. Yo. 
Yo, welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host, Rick the Dawn, and today we will be talking about the anthem. Francis Scott Key, the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, owned slaves that were my skin color. They want those same athletes to stand proud with a hand over their heart and say, we agree with this. We like this. The land of the free. Do y'all think we stupid when that song comes on? Not only am I not standing, I'm going to ignore it because that has nothing to do with patriotism. There were not just white men in those wars. So can we please stop that narrative? There were black people on those lines as well. In many cases, those black people were on the front lines fighting for a country that didn't or wouldn't fight for them. Play the black national anthem. Let's see how many white patrons stand up. How, how is it possible for you to be upset with somebody that's exercising their freedom? That's fake patriotism. Because... <laughs> Welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host, Rick the Dawn. Thank you all for watching. This episode is about the great DJ Vlad. He's exploiting our people for profit. I'm listening to an interview the other day, and he's asking some very, very touchy questions. And in some cases, he's having one artist talk about another artist. I heard you got indicted or something like that. You're asking questions that will do nothing positive. To the average consumer, DJ Vlad is having people on his platform, and he's having you know, very innocent interviews. That is checkers because a chess player like myself is saying this, that man is exploiting people for his own profit because that's 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 what it is. There's a certain level of responsibility that goes into what he's doing that I don't think that he's exerting. When those people get killed in these streets, DJ Vlad is silent. It's a setup. It's chess, not checkers. <laughs> Welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host, Rick the Dawn. Let's talk about something, folks. I'm going to try my best to keep this conversation as clean as possible because the Really Hood Podcast is a family show. Me and my wife, we were preparing to handle grown folks' business. She in the bed. I'm about to get in the bed before I can get into the circumference of the bed. She brings out a cell phone. She got like a grin on her face. It's like a wine grin. Like She like, hold on, hold on, hold on. She pulls out her phone and turns on r kelly i'm i'm like i'm 35 like i don't all i hear is he the horn from the back throws around on the front i tried to be a participant my hood code kicked in like hey man so i'm like i couldn't even i got so I, and i really wanted to ask her like so you and i think i did ask her i was like so you want me to do my thing with this man harmonizing in the background <laughs> Yo, this is Rick the Dawn here. I'm doing a quick fast forward in time because the content that you're about to see was actually recorded before the Russell Westbrook trade. Welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Rick the Dawn. Today's debate is about Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. One thing that I did notice is what Giannis said at the podium. He took a really gigantic shot against all super teams. Michael Jordan has six rings and LeBron has four. That is not something that you can just ignore when you're comparing two greats like this because Michael Jordan won more championships more efficiently with less help. Let's talk about Michael Jordan's teammates versus LeBron James. James's teammates, shall we? When we compare the numbers of Michael Jordan to the numbers of LeBron James. All-Star Games, LeBron James 17 to Michael Jordan's. Welcome to the Really Hood Podcast. I'm your host with the most, Rick the Dawn. Thank you for viewing. Today, we'll be talking about killer salt. I've lost about 30 pounds over the last two months. Um, and really, I've done that to get in shape because pretty soon, more like in two days, I'll be shooting videos for my album, Limits to Mercy. I'm getting in shape right now to, to shoot for that video, or two videos. Actually, I'm doing two videos this week. So, speaking of being or looking pudgy, I want to go back to about two to three months ago. Yo, so here is three steps to become rich right now. All right, you see that? You see how like how fat I was in the cheeks and all that? Salt and sugar are the biggest problems, especially within the black and brown communities. You gotta cut the sodium and you gotta cut the sugar. Those are two killers. I settled on some items that I knew that were healthy. Here it is, chicken, and I mean baked chicken. Today, I'm gonna create one of my favorite dishes, but it's like. <laughs> Hello.
Hello, I'm Rick the Dawn. I am the host of the Really Hood Podcast. I would like to start this episode off with a disclaimer. I am not pro-black. I am not anti-white. I am not a black nationalist. I'm actually pro-life, pro-good, anti-evil. I was in the church not long ago. I saw some depictions of a white Christ on the wall. Jesus was not a white man. There's no way he could have been. In fact, if you do some research, it says that he's from the city of Bethlehem, which is located in the country of Palestine, which is in the continent of Asia. For all intents and purposes, he was a Middle Eastern man. I think this is some of the stuff that causes people not to engage in Christ. A white man claiming to be the son of God would be praised. Go do a Google search on Bethlehem and the people of Palestine and the people of the Middle East. That is what Christ looked like. Let's imagine someone does a movie about your father. As soon as the screen comes on, the race of your father has been changed. Hello, I'm Rick the Don. You are now tuning in into the Really Hood Podcast. Let's jump right in. EJ Bradford was a 21-year-old male who entered a Alabama mall where a mass shooting had taken place. The U.S. Army are trying to go towards and save and protect. EJ Bradford, 21 years old, young man, a young hero, relying on his training. He had a permit to carry a firearm, began to engage the suspect. And in doing so, when the police arrived, the Alabama police shot EJ Bradford three times in the back. And I believe the spots where he was shot was in his back, the back of his neck, and the back of his head. I can't even begin to tell you how upsetting that is. This man is someone who served the country. That's not exactly where the story ends. In 2019, the Attorney General general of that space deemed the cops action in shooting EJ Bradford in the back three times. Rick the Dawn, you're watching the Really Hood Podcast. Thank you for watching, by the way. Now, today's episode is called The Great White Hope. And this topic came to me about two years ago. I believe a black man was gunned down. And then you had this group of white people congregate at the shooting site at which they were protesting in favor of the black person who was murdered by the police officers. And that really changed my perspective about the white people in America. It told me something I already knew, but I never really had visual confirmation of it. It told me that not all white people are the same. Not all white people hate black people. Not all white people are racist. That's what it taught me. We have to look at everybody according to the contents of their character, not based on anything other than that. And my prayer is that this episode shows just how much I admire the white race, despite some of the episodes in which I'm really going in. I'm talking about... (laughs) 